When working with expressions that contain thirds, it's important to remember that thirds behave the same way as variables, in the sense that like thirds can be added or subtracted in the same way as like terms in algebra. So in algebra, if you had something like 2x plus x, you would be able to collect those together and say that altogether you've got 3x. So thirds are exactly the same, provided you are dealing with the same kind of third, you can add and subtract them as you like. Okay, so for example, in number one, two square root three plus square root of three, we can, root of three and root of three are like terms, so if you have two square root threes and you add another square root three, you have three square root three altogether. Okay? In number two, you cannot add these two thirds in their current form because the square root of 96 is not the square root of 24. But if you were to simplify these thirds, you might find that you get to have like thirds in those two terms. So 96 is a product of 16 times 6, and 24 is a product of 4 times 6. Remember from the previous video that you watched, the goal is to find a factor of the number that is a perfect square because then you can square root it and take it outside of the third sign. So you'll have 4 square root 6 plus 2 square root 6. 4 square root 6 add 2 square root 6 is 6 square root 6. In number 3, you are now dividing two thirds. And before we tackle number 3, I just want to mention that if you have two radicals that are the same kind of radical, like a square root times a square root or a cube root times a cube root, etc., you are able to multiply the contents of those third signs. So the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, it's the same kind of radical. So we can multiply the contents to get 6. Remember, even from algebra, when you multiply and divide, the rules are different from when you add and subtract. And it's the same when you divide. If you had the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 5, the square root of 10 divided by 5 is just the square root of 2. And just remember that it only works if you're dealing with the same kind of root. It wouldn't work if you had a cube root times a square root. Okay, number 3. Before we simplify the fraction, let's um, simplify the thirds. 56 is the product of 14 times 4, so it's the square root of 4 times 14. And the square root of 63 is 9 times 7. So remember again, the goal is you want to find a perfect square that you multiply. So that gives you 2 square root 14 over 3 square root 7. So we've got our two thirds, that is that fraction is already in its simplest form. We can now divide the thirds by each other. The square root of 14 divided by the square root of 7 is the square root of 2. You just divide the contents of the two thirds. In your homework book are two examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try on your own. Number one, before we multiply here, we're going to just simplify all of these thirds. The square root of 50 is the square root of 25 times 2, which will simplify to 5 root 2. Square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times 2, which will simplify to square root th uh, 3 square root 2. And 32 is 16 times 2, which simplifies to 4 square root 2. Inside the brackets, remember that the order of operations says that if we can, we must try and do the brackets first, otherwise we do distributive law. Those two terms in the brackets are like thirds, so we can add them. 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2 is 7 root 2. And now you can multiply. 7 times 5 is 35, and root 2 times root 2, the roots will cancel each other out, and you're just left with 2, and 35 times 2 is 70. Number 2, the square root of 242 242 is actually equal to 121 times 2. So the square root of 121 is 11. So it becomes 11 root 2. Square root of 50 we've already seen is 5 root 2. And 11 subtract 5 gives us 6 root 2 as our final answer.